G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, I have been working on the Amerigo Vespu sheet, right? And it doesn't look like I've done much. Well, I have started on all the orange and I've done a whole lot of parts in orange, but I kind of got waylaid doing... What do you think of that? As is close to the photo that I've got and also the box art as I can get. Would you like to see how I managed to basically fix that whole balcony rail up? Because this is what it looks like before, right? Very boring. And then that's what it looks like now. Much more interesting. So, would you like to see how I accomplish that? You would? Great. Roll the music. <laughs> If you're enjoying the content that I produce on this channel, the reviews and the kit builds and some of the sillier sort of funny videos, then look, you can help me out by supporting me on YouTube membership or Patreon. Plus, my YouTube members and Patreons get these videos early and advert free. Yep, yeah, none of those stinking adverts. Plus, they get access to all kinds of behind the scenes stuff where I sort of explain what I'm doing, help with answers to questions and sort of tips and tricks, and coming soon, Merchandise. Yes, you too can get a Tug t-shirt. For less than the price of a coffee a month. Yeah, it's not much, really. It'll help me out. And if I get enough of you really supporting me, I can produce more and more videos. So please, consider supporting me on Patreon or YouTube or even with one-time donation. It helps me continue to produce these videos and keep the quality up. Just like this microphone. That was paid for by my patrons. And it's the reason why I'm sounding a little bit better these days. Alright, on with the video. I spent this morning masking so that I could uh, paint the brown orange trim there along the top of the hull. So that's all been done and ready to go. I had to be very careful to mask up all that woodwork that I had done in the previous video. And the white. I'm keeping the white because all the bulkheads on here, as far as I can tell, should be white. So what I also did then, I thought, well, seeing as I've had to mix up some uh, orange, and this is what I've done, I've made my orange brown here as close as I could to the photos. So it's um, certainly a lot different to that ghastly orange in the kit. I've used basically equal parts of orange and yellow and then I've tapped in some oxide until I got just the shade I wanted. So that was basically the mix. Bit of trial and error. Now I had a look through the sprues and I've pulled out everything that also needs to be this colour. And there's parts of the um, the bridge that need that but they have a little white section so I've masked that off basically I'll probably paint that with some white paint but for now I've masked it off so it's not um, the orange brown easier to paint white over white than it is to paint white over orange brown so all these all the davits and there's lots of deck fittings and quite a lot of the um, the big bridge pieces both fore and aft um, the little superstructures they all need a painted this is the aft section that drops down of the deck. Now the bottom part of that needed to be white because that will match up with those um, bulkheads which as I said I've just masked in they're going to be white. So there's all of that that'll basically get the colours on them. I know they're on the sprues so when I cut them off obviously there will be little you know marks where the um, plastic shows but that's going to be fairly easy to touch up. One good thing about life colour is you can hairy brush it on in small areas and feather it in and it just disappears into your airbrushing. It is really good. And the fact is I'm using the same colour airbrush as I am to hairy brush. These ghastly orange things. Now, these are all the masks in the yards. I, um, I could paint these white first and then put my orange colour on. Well, we'll just see. I think because they're already sort of an orangey colour and they look slightly different the photos, the colour of the deck to the colour of the masts and yards is slightly different that I'll put a light coat on, see if that just dulls these down and that's all I'll need. So that'll look fine. So that's where we are now. We are ready to airbrush on my custom made orange brown colour and let's see how that looks.
One of the areas where this kit is let down fairly badly is here at the stern. And here's a comparison pic. And you'll see there, holding this up against my iPad, where there's actually a photo, there's a whole ton of stuff missing here. So the original moulding by MI just basically had a, a very simple sort of little balcony area there, which is all covered. Mine's a bit scratched up. Don't worry about that. Now, there are doors in here, and there are portholes that are supposed to go all the way along here. And there are even portholes that are supposed to go under here. There are brackets that support that. And instead of a big solid rail, there actually is a very nice meshy rail. So this got me thinking. I could certainly cut away that plastic and I have some mesh. It's fairly fine that I was going to use at the bow as I did over here on the Nippon Maru. See the Nippon Maru's out? Look at that. Notice there's no rigging at the bow there. No. I took it out to do a comparison and I just bumped the rigging at the bow and it all just molecularized and disappeared and floated away in oblivion. I don't know, none of the rest of it has, all the rest of it seems to be fine, but somehow the um, the rigging here at the bow, which had been replaced at one spot, so I don't know if I put too much CA glue on or something, I don't know, something's affected it, who knows, we'll talk about that later. But anyhow, yeah, I've got the mesh, and I have used that at the bow before as a sort of little netting, and it works quite well, so we can certainly use this to make a, uh, a railing. And if I have a look at the photos that are online, it's not straight up and down like normal railing. It's a diagonal mesh. So that's great. I can cut a little diagonal piece out of this to perfectly fit at the stern here. The other thing is I'm going to need some brackets. And I'm going to need those um, doors. Well, luckily, I have lots of photo flying around. This is from the... Um, the Varac, and I bought this photo etch set only to add a few little things. And it has here a whole lot of these tiny brackets, which I think are supports for the boats. And I'm never going to use them for the Varac, but they just happen to be about the right size to fit underneath, underneath there. So I should be able to just pop a few of those in. See how I go before I go insane. And rummaging around inside my grass spray where I had the full PE set for the Academy kit. Of course, I bought the Trumpeter kit, so I didn't need to use all this. I have doors and hatches and all kinds of things left in this that I can use. So we'll be putting some nice doors on the back there. I'll be drilling out some portholes. I'll be measuring up the whole thing with my little calipers. These things are great. This was only like two shekels out of China, okay? And um, it is a little wobbly, but if you measure like for like, it'll it'll match so you know sometimes when you've got like a 0.1 millimeter drill bit and you stick it on there it tells you yeah it um there you go there's a difference so you've got to watch that 0.7 so it's um you've got to know the point that it's actually most accurate it's certainly not accurate the tips those tips are terrible but there's a point about there where it measures quite well and if you always use the same point measuring like for like then you'll get a relative reading that's correct Another thing that was very annoying, I'll show you now before we go on to. The width here of the hull, the top half, which you're not going to be able to bend or do much with, it's pretty fixed, right? It is one millimetre wider than when you put the hull halves together down here. So it didn't really match up very well. So I solved the problem by putting this little spacer in. First I used my snappy little sort of measuring tool and I found it was one millimeter different between the upper hull and the lower hull so I measured this little space and added a millimeter and then pushed this in and it was a bit of a push it didn't really like it so um, I mean I glued this fairly securely here and here but I think I had a similar problem with the um, nipple Maru. another little trick you got to do with these kits is there's no way to actually position it from the lower to the upper hull, right? It'll just slide back and forth. All it's got is these two little tabs in the middle. So I found when I did the nipple and row that all you need to do is make a little pin in the bow that'll sit in the space there. And that pin in the bow, right, will hold onto there. So then you can click it all together. And then you'll get a reasonably good connection. It's not perfect. 
Worst part about this is you can't really put that on, putty it all up and paint all this. Not if you want to do your rigging, because your rigging is all internally here. The rigging as, as per the kit. You see there's a whole lot of holes in there. So this whole thing has to remain separate until you can get the, the decks on and the masts in. And then you put the lower hull on, which is a bit of a pest. It's a bit of bad design. I mean, we could completely forget about their holes and just do our own rigging. But I've sort of come this far and I've done this much. But anyhow, there you go. So we'll get on with that. Lots to do. I put the bowsprit on just to give it a bit of size and scale. So when I put it up against the um, Nippemaru, you can see that it's a little bit shorter in the hull, but much longer with the bowsprit. And it's definitely a lot wider with the beam. So let's get on with this upgrade and add the PE and um, drill out the holes and add the mesh. And I've got a little bit of brass wire there for a top roll. And let's see if it all works. One part of the upgrade that I really wanted to try but I was kind of dreading was putting these tiny little triangular brackets here underneath the walkway. You see the photo of the actual ship? Yeah, look, I didn't know if I could pull it off. So I didn't actually videotape it, I just kind of went for it because it was very similar to the brackets I'd put on the pedestals of the guns for the Schnell boat. And look, I actually managed to do it. The trick is you, um, you use a toothpick and you actually put the CA glue a tiny line on the actual thing you're going to put it on, not on the part. Then you can pick the part up with tweezers and very carefully bring it in, tap it so it just locates. Once you've got it roughly in place, you've got about a second or two just to make sure it's square. And then you come back with toothpick with fresh CA glue on and you add it all around to cement it in place. And that was a trick that I learnt doing those guns on the Schnell boat. But that has added so much detail. Now, there's twice as many of those on the real ship, but there's no way I'm pushing my luck that far. I'm happy with that. That's given me a look. What I need to do now is start tidying this all up and painting it before I put on the mesh railing and um, finish it off. Just when you think the planking is over, no, there's actually a little bit of planking required on the stern here. There's a wainscot that goes around 
and that's actually planks. So there'll be a little photo there to show you. Mine's not exactly right yet, and I probably do need to stain it. But you can see things have come together. I'm not going to paint those little brackets under the, um, the walkway. I'll just leave those that colour because they kind of are white with a bit of gold trim. So look, I'll, I'll just leave them. I think they look rather nice, the brass colour. My walkway was painted a tan because that's kind of what it is in the photos. I left the um, orange along the top and um, there would be a tiny run of black but I haven't just it's getting too small it's getting far too fiddly uh, that is as good as I'm going to get now the hard part now is the balcony rail and I've made one up later on the video I had bent this piece of wire and now I've tried to attach a bit of um, mesh that's the mesh I showed you earlier on right? and that mesh I've just cut diagonally 45 degrees along it as best I could and created a it's only just over two millimeter tall sort of bit of railing now that's currently upside down because it really hasn't have much strength when it goes up the right way I have made my railing the top rail there a little bit too long deliberately so that it fits into two holes that I have already pre-drilled so now we'll see moment of truth can I poke my rail into the hole without destroying this whole tiny little bit of mesh and will that finish it off could be a disaster we'll see well there was a little bit of swearing off camera and i had to shut everything down because bass the cat was getting upset but it's not perfect but i have a railing it needs a little bit of a tidy up but i'm going to see how I glue it into position before it moves anymore and then I'll get in there with a very fine photo etch scissors and cut out bits of rail that have frayed loose and glue bits of rail back on that have come off. But I think you'd have to admit, I'll need two fingers as well. I think you'd have to admit that is a hell of a lot nicer than when I started. And it really wasn't that hard to do. Okay, it's about mm, probably six hours modeling. And to some of you might say, well, that's a lot, Harry. Well, for me, it was something I wanted to do and achieve. And I did. I achieved it. And I think that is going to really make this model look so much better. Remembering that this is tiny, okay? So you're really only seeing it. But compared with what we started with, uh, I'm very happy. I did what I wanted to do. I've got proper railing. I've got brackets. I've got doors. I've got everything. So that was a whole video. Yes, I know. Um, well, at least it wasn't a video about planking. But it was a video about um, making a rail, making a railing. Yeah, there you go. If you've liked what you've seen so far, then please comment, like, subscribe to my channel. And if you really want to help me out, then you can go to Patreon or become one of my YouTube members. And that gives me a shot in the arm and a bit of cash to spend on kits. And, you know, just basically gives me the freedom to make more of these videos because they do take a lot of time. Anyhow, if you've enjoyed all that, please watch the rest of the series and there's heaps more videos on my channel. But for now, we'll leave it there. We'll come back with the um, deck ornaments and we'll try and get into those masks. I'll try not to find something else to scratch build. Well, I, I can't promise. Something always happens. Anyhow, that's it. It's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.